DVD. Good morning, everyone. You know, it's kind of gloomy outside, but the sun is shining in here. It's shining in here if you let it shine. So what's coming out of your mouth? So you need to do that. I have a story this morning. Okay. I heard about this minister. He was driving down the road, and he was looking down, or he was looking at his cell phone like a lot of people do when they're driving. I notice when I'm following behind somebody, all the ones they're veering here and there, well, I see they're looking at their cell phone. You know, so you need to pay attention to that. So anyway, um, he, he, he uh, accidentally veered a little bit, this minister, and he veered off the road, and he went through the ditch, and he hit a telephone pole. So there was a guy following behind him, and he seen what was going on. He seen, you know, that he was veering on the road, and there wasn't paying attention, and so he was concerned about the guy, so he pulled up and he ran through the ditch over to the guy and he says, are you okay, sir? The minister said, oh, yes, I'm just fine. The angel of the Lord was with me. The guy was a little shocked and he said, well, he said, you better let him ride with me because you're trying to kill him. <laughs> so so, so uh, we got to, we got to, Watch our angels, what we're doing with our angels. So this morning we're going to talk a little bit. I want, I want to talk a little, about, a little bit about imagination. Do you, do you remember, you know, as kids growing up, where did your imagination take you? Did it take you to about things that were going to happen in the future or things that you were imagining that you would be or could become? You know, I know... A lot of little guys, a lot of little boys think about, oh, I'd like to be that baseball player, or I'd like to be that football player. So they, their imagination runs wild with them as they're growing up, which is a, which is a good thing. You're, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to let your imagination work for you. It's in, the, it's in the Word that your imagination can work for you. So anyway, I'm going to talk about that this morning. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you will always have in sufficiency of all things may abound to every good work. So if you have a desire, you know, if you have a desire to give, yet financial, if you have financial difficulties and you're holding back because of that, you, you may be surprised to learn that your need is not for money, but what you need is a spiritual breakthrough on, on your finances on why you should be giving. You need a breakthrough on that. You need to take the word of God and shatter the images of being black, poor, or in poverty or anything, or that you got a lot of bills piling up. You need to just take the word of God and place it over that. Plead that over that things that is going on. You need to replace them with a vision of sufficiency, just like that scripture I read. It tells us there are more things in this world than just money. Um, how can you do this? By spending time thinking on the uh, prosperity promises which is provided to us in the Word of God. There's all kinds of prosperity promises to us in the Word of God. You just need to search them out. You know, you'll find out, you know, you'll say, well, what is my, what is my will on that? Well, if you go to the Word, you'll find out what, the, what God's will is for that. So, um, you need to see yourself as being a generous person, a generous giver, to give, not just to give to the church, but give to people in need. There's all, there's all kinds of people in need, so you need to be generous with that, and see yourself as a giver, that you're always there for someone who's in need. Each time you do that, the promises of God will become more real to you, and you'll grow into it. So, uh, so you. So what I'm saying is you need to use your imagination that you're capable of doing that. Use your imagination. Oh, I got all this extra money. I can sow it into somebody. I see some family that's in need of food. I can get them some food. So use your imagination for that. Maybe you can't do it at that time, but use your imagination to get into that proper frame of mind to do that. Um, you know, that's why God gave us imagine, imagination. Um, 
so you, uh, I need to also warn you, sometimes when you use your imagination, you can create some images that are not good for you. What do I mean by that? Maybe you will create images of worldly things. So we need to be careful of that. That's when we need to watch our tongue. Uh, <clears throat> if you've been broke, for instance, all of most of, um, all of most of your life, you may take a while for you to get yourself in the right frame of mind. But you can do it if you stay on the word. So, Second um, Corinthians. I'm going to read a couple scriptures from Second Corinthians. This was um, Apostle Paul was writing to the Corinthian church when he when he wrote these scriptures. He said. Um, he was talking to the Corinthian church, the Corinthian people. He said, you are being tested by many troubles. At that time, if you read those scriptures, you know what was going on in Macedonia. They were, they were struggling and they were poor and were having a tough time. So he says, you are being tested by troubles and they are very poor. But they also fill with abundant joy, which has overflow and rich generosity. What do you mean by that? He said in chapter 3, he said... Um, I, he says, I can testify that they gave not only what they could, could afford, but for more. And they did it out of their own free will. Even though they were a struggling church and a struggling group of people, they gave out of their, what they had. They gave from what they had. And you know what was even uh, more important about this? They begged that they could do it. They begged that they could do it. Even though... They were struggling. They begged that they wanted to give to the Lord. So that's an, something that we need to have in our imagination also. So um, also then, you know that uh, in chapter, in verse 9, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was, was rich, yet for the sake he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. He became poor so he can make you rich. Uh, so right now, if you have plenty and can help those who are in need, later they will have plenty, and they'll help you in need. So that's one thing we need to know, need to keep in mind. And search those scriptures out. Uh, again, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 1, 1 through 14. That's a good place to go for. You'll find out what the Word of God says on this, on this subject. So. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're going to uh, take up our tithes and offerings this morning. Debbie's going to, and Judy's going to lead us in praise and worship this morning. It is laid up for the just. It gives God pleasure to see you prosperous. Blessed is the man who in that promise trust. All the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. When you delight in the word of God and meditate in the truth, you're like a tree planted by the rivers bearing lots of fruit. You're blessed in the city and blessed in the field because of your diligent hand. God's just look as far as you see it's yours, the promised land. All the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It gives God pleasure to see you prosperous. Blessed is the man who in that promise trust. All the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It is laid up for the just. It gives God pleasure to see you prosperous. Blessed is the man who in that promise trust. All the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. All the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Yes, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. That's us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 16.3 says, The Lord causes my thoughts to become agreeable to his will. 
So my plans are established and succeed. You need to put in there, the Lord causes your thoughts to become agreeable. Not just me, your thoughts. Your thoughts to become agreeable. You know, and, and then uh, Psalms 35, 27 and Galatians 3, 14 says, The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. We are his servant. So when we are prosper, have prosperity, it gives the Lord ple pleasure to see that happening. So we thank you, Lord. Father, I pray blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, take these tithes and offerings and use them to further your kingdom, Father. Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor that we're able to come into your storehouse and bring our tithes and offerings to you. We do this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. The amen. children can be released. Amen, amen, amen. You know, you talk about, whoops, I'm knocking stuff around here. We talk about kids having dreams, visions. You know, we have, uh, Pastor Kenny put some more sand in the sandbox, right? So here little Tony has got a little truck. And he's taking the sand out of the, the, the sandbox, and he's driving over and pouring it by the fire pit, and he's pouring it. And I'm like, what's the kid doing? Well, that's what he's got an imagination to do, so he's going delivering this sand. So I said to Pastor Kenny, you know what we have to do? We have to get a box, and he's got to take it over him and little Gunner and drive that up into that box and dump their sand go back and get a lo another load, and then take it around, it, take it again, and then pour it back in the sandbox. Isn't that a good idea? Oh, Rios. Oh, he's illegally dumping. <laughs> Otherwise, he's illegally dumping. That is, is that good or is that good? Well, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Colossians again. Okay, now remember, Colossians, Paul was talking to the Colossian church, right? He was talking to the Colossians, right? Okay, he was in prison in Rome. He spent a lot of time in prison, didn't he? But it didn't stop him. Adversity doesn't stop you. It moves you on if you get the right vision. In verse 9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you, he said, that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's you. I received that. Say, I received that that we would walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that we'd be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyful sin. Do, do, you, do you receive that? Amen. Amen. Giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. You, when you got born again, you got translated into the kingdom of God. Now you're not going to go to hell. And the only, how is the only way you get to heaven? What does God say in his word? That you have to ask Jesus into your heart. That's the only way. People say, oh, there's so many different ways to get to heaven. Show me it in the Bible, and I'll believe it. You can't show me. I don't believe it. Now, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Your sins are forgiven. Can you imagine all that God's got going on for us? God is so good. So you may be seated, please. People are traveling. I know that um, Dee Dee's watching us. Good morning, Dee Dee. And she's in the beautiful state of South Dakota with their wonderful governor. Like we have a wonderful governor now. I'm calling those things that I want. All right, so now what I want to do here, and uh, Keegan, would you bring up Matthew 7, 7, but um, watch, we're supposed to watch our words and understand our authority. We got to watch our words and then understand our authority. So we're going to review a little bit of what we saw last week with Charles Caps. I hope you had an opportunity to listen to it again. You, you're not going to believe this, but I listened again. And I got another nugget out of it. It's just awesome. So what does he say here? Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open for you. What is that talking about, keep on asking? Keep on asking for things that you want. 
I used to think, this is what I was taught when I was young. You don't ask for the little things because when the big things come along, then you won't get it because you're asking too much. They were, they were thinking about a parent. A child comes to a parent and asks and asks, and pretty soon the parent says, stop, right? Mm -hmm. That's not God. He wants the little things. He wants the big things. He wants it all. Then also, Mark 11, 23 and 24. Now, we're looking at our words again. Charles Caps is talking about our words and speaking. So what does it say here? I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, what's the mountain? Whatever the situation, whatever the problem is, you don't like something, you tell the mountain to be thou removed, okay? How do you do that? You speak the word of God. But if the devil is getting after you, you say, I bind you, you spirit of sickness, get off of me. You know, uh, okay, I won't go there because I'll get stuck there. Thank you, Father. So we're supposed to say to this mountain, we're supposed to speak to the mountain. The mountain was, Charles Capps was talking about selling his land, selling houses, right? Okay, and his bills, and he spoke to his bills, all right? So he's saying here, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart, 24. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Now, this, this scene, Wells, Sean Wells, that Intercessors for America, he prayed, and he, he wanted to go to these places, and, and like she was telling us in the prayer room, that they didn't want him to come. The police don't come to Oregon, don't come to different. Well, he's, I got to listen to God. That's what we got to do, listen to God, right? So now, what did he do? He went. But also, he prayed. And you know what he's doing? That man is praising and worshiping all across America. What is the most important thing for we human beings? To pray and praise. Remember the walls of Jericho? What happened with the walls of Jericho as the people went around it seven times? They had they had all the same image, didn't they? They were going to get in there and take it. Did they know how it was going to come down? No. But they had to trust God, just like we have to trust God. And as they praised and worshipped, what happened? What happened? The walls came down, and it made a ramp so they could go in and take the city. Isn't that amazing? Nobody got hurt. It worked just perfect. So now he tells us, he tells us again, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, speak to your bills, speak to your health, speak. Do you want to sell a house? Sell a house, blah, 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 on and on, okay? That you, and, and, and you tell whatever it is, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. I think the biggest thing is people with illnesses and with bills, don't you think? Once, once you learn how to speak it and you praise and worship, and all of a sudden money comes and you say, well, how, now wait a minute, how did that bill get paid? Well, look at that, will you? You know, it works, doesn't it? So, and, and it will happen, but you must really believe it. Why? Because you don't want to doubt. If you doubt, you've mis you missed it. What, it. what are you doubting? You're doubting that you're going to have what you say? Absolutely. And when you doubt it, you just stole from yourself whatever you're speaking. Isn't that amazing? So that's why we got to watch our words, don't we? So he told us to speak to things. Charles took his bills. He laid them out in front of him. He called them paid. He said, um, uh, in full, disappear, go away. And he called them paid in Jesus' name. He spoke to the mountain. The mountain was the bills. If you have bills, lay them out there. Speak to them. You know what? I remember. Um, when we had our, for our cottage a long, that's a long time ago. The, this, well, anyway, the place isn't the, the loaning place, the, the environment. But we had borrowed money for the cottage, okay? And I would pay extra money on that, and I would just pray over that. And then somebody was speaking to us about put paid in full. 
So I wrote on the, or I had stickers, yeah. And I put paid in full, and I took the book in to make the payment. And they said, this is paid in full? I said, yep, it's going to be right now. I had been paying ahead. And she said, oh, you don't have much to go. You're two years ahead of it. Oh, really? You know how much interest that takes off? Is that amazing? I turned around, and it wasn't but a couple more payments, and it was finished. I even surprised myself. People would give me birthday money. People would give me God cash. I wasn't a pastor yet. You know, and then you sell something, take the money. But what do we do with that money? We go out and have a party. We want to do it because we got to treat ourselves. You know what? Get your bills paid, right? You'll feel really good. So now, you talk to inanimated objects. Remember that? Charles talked to the house and to the land. He said to somebody, he said, you will be a blessing to somebody else. That's what he said about the house. You will be a blessing to somebody else. I call you soul. But what I still have built, no, no, call what you want. Where does it tell me to do that? Romans 4, 17. Call those things that are not the way you want them to be. Why don't we believe God? Oh, because I'm so much smarter than God. I don't think you are. No. He said, someone is going to come. Remember he said to the one guy, somebody, they were getting um, a little discouraged. And he, he said, um, you need to pray to this thing. And anyway, talked to him for a little while. And he said, I'm going to help you with it. He said, somebody's going to come down this road and is going to see you and want you. Do you remember? Do you remember that? And see, another house, he said, well, I, another house, I think it was, they, he said that they're going to come, you know, that's the same, they're going to come, and they're going to see your bricks, they're, the way, they're going to like the way they see the bricks that are stacked, they're going to like the way the windows look, there will be blessing, that house is going to be a blessing to somebody, I call you a soul, right? Remember, a woman came, and she heard him speak. And she said, I can't wait to go home and do that with my house. And when I do it, I'm going to send you an offering. Two weeks later, he got an offering. The place sold. So remember Oral Roberts, he said, use illustrations. Now, I just told you about little Tony with the sand, right? All right. Now, do you remember what I just told you? What did I just tell you? What does he do? He's got a little truck, one of the little trucks in there, and he takes it out, dumps the sand around on my yard, and I'm saying, I don't want that, Tony. But he's got an imagination, so he's doing that. You see it? The imagination. We have an imagination. So the Tower of Babel, the people had a oneness in mind, don't they? They were wicked devil worshipers that were building the Tower of Babel. So what God came down and he saw they had an image and they were building this for evil. And what did he have to do? He had to change their languages to stop it. Right? Oh, and he did, didn't he? Because even those who aren't born again still can get an image and make it happen with their words. Okay? So there is power. There is no power. In denying sickness, is there? No power in denying I'm debt free. You don't go out there and spread this to people. Don't do that because they're going to come back and get you all confused. You understand that? Okay, so you don't deny that you have debt. You don't deny that you're sick, but you have the power to call for healing. That's what you do. You call for what you, what do you want? What do you want for your marriage? What do you want for your children? What do you want for your grandchildren? What do you want for your bills? What do you want? Start putting it down, putting it together. There is no distance in the spiritual realm. No dis distance. There's, there's, um, I got to go back, spiritual realm. Words, words, words are spirit, and they go into the future. Words go into the future. Right? And what is it doing? Words are a spirit. 
and you have a goal for those words. So it goes into the future, and it gets there before you. Is that wonderful? So Psalms 107.20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He didn't say he sent his word to do it. He sent his word and did it. He did it. He did that for us. Okay? We don't have, we don't put a demand on God. We put a demand on the provisions that are already there for us. We got that? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, did you read yes, today's? Keep paddling upstream. Who has, um, I want this in the, Kim, do you have the tablet? Okay. I would like you to look up Romans 10, 8 through 17, New Living Bible. Okay? And then if you would come up here and Debbie will give you a microphone and we'll read that and go from there. But while she's doing so, that is Romans 10, 8, 17. What does Kenneth say? You, how many have the faith to faith? I, I, I had... I had Michaela bring me a new one up today because my other one, the pages are falling out. Then the other one that I just finished, about 20 of the pages did fall out. Then I got them all, and I said, oh, man. And I got it so scribbled up. But I, I love it. I love it. But listen to this. Keep pedaling upstream. Set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Set a watch. Set a watch over our mouth. Watch the words that are coming out of us, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. And he's saying, guard on another translation. So do you really believe that you need to watch over your mouth? Question mark. Most believers don't. You can tell that just by listening to their conversation. Is it always negative? I mean, you know, now that you know the truth about words and that your words do make a difference, is it kind of hard to be around people with negative? It's, it's, it is because you, in a way, you feel very bad for them because you're saying you're cursing yourself, your, themselves. You're not helping yourself. And you know what? You're even getting ill because of words are evil and it brings evil onto you. Yeah. Words, evil words are evil. Okay. They possess, for example, to be trusting God concerning their health. But you're likely to hear them say something like this. I, I, I'm, I'm just sure, I'm just sure I'm going to get the flu. I'm just sure. I get it every year. I'll be sicker than a dog, too. You'll see. Do you think about that? Do people like that? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Do people like that have what they say? Do they? Yeah, yeah. You hear that all the time. Oh, yes. Check with them a few weeks later, and they'll be quick to tell you that they have, they just got sick. Well, look at that. Why did they get sick? Because they said it. But odds are, if you try to tell them their connection between the words they speak and the illness they suffered, they'll look at you as if you were out of your mind. Is that true? I mean, if they say something that's evil and you say something that's, that's holy and of God and they think you're crazy, that's because the way they are raised. Don't get down on them. You pray for them. Of course, if they dig into the word of God and find out what he has to say about the subject, they'd realize that the words that are spoken have a tremendous impact on their lives they'd see that words oh, quite literally determine their future. Your words are determining you. Oh, I'm just kidding around. No, 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 that's words. You've got to watch what you're saying. If you're a born-again believer, you're always experienced the most powerful example of that. You believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ will change the entire course of your life. You know firsthand just how powerful your words can be. Yet even so, if you've, if you've like me, you oh, what do you do? You still find yourself speaking faith-filled words or the opposite. Don't we do that? Don't we do that? Okay. 
for many years now, and despite all the times I've spent on it and all the experiences I've had, it's still something I watch, as Kenneth was saying. I have to watch all the times. Kenneth Wolfman. We would think he'd have it made. No, we all mess up. But we're perfect through Jesus Christ because he made you righteous. When he says you're born again, you become righteous, you are righteous. You see, the world around you is in negative flow, like a rushing river. It's always pulling at you, trying to get you to flow with it. Living by faith and speaking words of faith is like trying to pedal upstream. It's easier to go downstream than upstream. Oh, yeah. You can do it, but it's a great deal of work. And there's never a time you can afford to take a vacation from it. All you have to do is to relax a little bit, and you'll just start drifting right back down the river. If you don't guard your mouth, what's going to come out of it? Oh, boy. Make the decision right now to set a watch over your lips, determine to consistently fill your mouth with the words of God, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Proverbs 4.20. Let God's word be your watch. Did it, get it? See, when you've got that word of God memorized and it's at you, and all of a sudden you're going to say something, you're going to say, oh, I'm really sick. No. And I'm going to tell you a little bit this morning about a woman who watched her words. Let God's word be be your watch, and everything you say will take you a little farther upstream. Got it? Kim, would you read that, please? I wanted that 8 through 17. New living. New living. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why script, the scripture says, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes by hearing. That is by hearing the good news about Christ. Amen. Okay, just stay there. Now, Keegan, Second Kings. We're going to bring up Second Kings 4, 8 through 37. Stay here. Okay. Let's read this together. No. Is it easier to read it together with me? Or No, it isn't. Okay. We have that up. Let's read this through, and then I'm going to pick out some things. Okay, so would you read? You're good at doing that. Go ahead, Kim. Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Junum, where there was a notable wom woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would churn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall. And let us put a bed for him there, a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be, whenever he comes to us, he can churn in here. And it happened one day that he came there and he churned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to, and he said to him, so now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king? Or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? Okay, Again. hold up, hold up. Now, did you pick out some things about this woman? Did you pick out a few things about this woman? Okay, this was a woman who was prepared ahead of time. 
This was a woman that prepared ahead of time. She was a giver. She was she she paid the tithes, she paid the offering, she was a giver. She had a husband. She was a wealthy woman. She was influential and rich. This this is that woman. Now, there's a man coming through, Elisha. And Elijah, Elisha followed him and was his arm bearer. And he asked Elijah for a double portion of the blessings of the miracles and the godly things. So she was looking at him because her heart was just like Elisha. Got it? So now we know a little bit about this woman. She's influential. She's rich. And she's got character. I mean, she's got it all. And she has a husband that trusts her. Wow, it goes on and on. Continue to read this, please. And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. Get that? So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, and of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and his father, and said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to his servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men of the donkeys, and I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she saddled the donkey. She watched her tongue. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Was her son dying? He was dead already. He was dead. dead already. Did the father know that? No. No. They thought. In those days, the, the scholars, that he had um, sun, what is it called? Sunstroke. Okay, go ahead. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, what, Sorry. <laughs> now he said to his servant, Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, it is well with you. It is well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. The Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him. For lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. Mm. When Elijah came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shudamite woman. So he called her, and when she came in to him, he said, Pick up your son. So she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Wow, what do you think about that? Thank you, Kim. What did, what did you just read? You, re, re, you heard and read about the life of a woman who she was, her character, huh? all about her. So 
let's just go back and pick up some of these things. Let's look at the woman she prepared ahead of time. Okay. Again, she was very wealthy. She was a giver. She not only gave financially, but she budgets her household. Then what does she do? She didn't ask for a child, did she? She was, she was old, and he was old. So she had given up on that, did she? Did God? Did he, remember, she was preparing beforehand? Did she know that, that he was going to tell her, you're going to have a child? No. Was that the desire of her heart? Because every woman in those days that didn't have a child, that was embarrassment on them. It was very bad for them. So now, what did she do? She stood, and she kept on doing what she was doing over the, over the years. She budgeted her household well. Her husband went out to work, right? She knew what to do. So the woman didn't desire any of the owners, the owners of any worldly things. She desired only what God wanted. That's what she was fulfilling. Her husband trusted her. Um, he was out in the field working. The boy had a sunstroke. One of the workers, one of the workers, he said to one to his workers, take the boy to his mother. They took the boy to his mother, and he laid on her lap. What was she doing? She was waiting for the man of God to come along. And who do you think brought the man of God down the road? God. God brought that man of God down the road, and as she heard he was coming, what did she do? She made a demand. She said to her husband, sent word to him, I'm in a hurry now because this is bad news. We've got to get this thing done now. We don't have time to spare here. So get me a donkey. Put She didn't send her people out to get the donkey. She went and or get the, get the man, Elisha. She went herself because she had sown into him, and she was looking for her healing, and she was now moving in her authority and the desires of her heart that that boy live that she didn't even ask for, but also the man that said, you're going to have a child, he was responsible for that child. Just like God is responsible for us. Got it? Is that good? So she gets on the donkey and she said, go ahead of me. You can go faster than me. But I'm coming. She didn't hesitate. It. There was people there, came. It didn't work. She got a hold of the man of God that she had sowed into. And what did she do? She asked her husband, I would like to build a, a room on for this man of God when he comes through. Because whenever he come through in the past, she would invite him in and she would feed him. Now, she had to be persistent in that. You know that? No, I want you to come to my house and eat. So it shows she was persistent because she wanted to bless that man. She wasn't looking for anything for herself because she knew he was a man of God and she wanted to further the kingdom of God. So he would come in. One day, as I said, she said to her husband, let's build a room on with walls and put a bed in there and put a desk in there so he can come and he can stay. He'll have a place to lay his head. Wow, is she sowing a lot into him? Just like you're sowing a lot into our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So she was a woman of character. She didn't mess around. She just got it done. And remember, when he came into the house, she before she left, she laid that boy on Elijah's bed. Why did she do that? Because that's what the Lord told her to do, and she didn't ask for that child. He did. Got it? Okay. So he comes up there, and what is the first thing he do, does? 
He lays hand on hand, eyes on eyes, mouth on mouth. Breathes in and the boy is getting warm. Gets up and goes around. He didn't quit. He continued until that boy's raised up. He called the mother and said, here's your kid. Take your kid. Get her done. That's exactly what happened. She prepared ahead of time. When we prepare ahead of time by getting the word into us, and that's exactly what you're doing, and for those who are watching online, and there are people that will watch this tomorrow and the next day, but when you prepare ahead of time by getting the word of God into you, when something comes at you, you are not going to get knocked over like a bullwhip in a wind. What is a bullwhip? That's in a, in, a, in a swamp area, and it just blows, and, you know, I've got the flowers out in front, and that wind comes through, and it just do you ever see a, a, an oats field? Farm coming out. There's a, there'll be a wind coming through. I know one time that that wind came and flattened our, our oats field. That did not make Dad happy. Because if it flattens it, it's damaged. Right? Well, guess what? We have got the word of God. And when something comes at you, you stand in the face of it and you take a hold of it. You take your authority that Jesus Christ has given to you. What has Jesus given to you? He's made you perfect. Your spirit man is perfect. This soul and this flesh is not perfect yet. But that's why we live by the spirit and not by the flesh. Because the flesh wants to do all this junk. Get you in more trouble and you can shake a fist at, right? We got to stop and we got to think, what is coming down the road? When I get older, am I going to be in good health or am I going to be a mess? I don't want to be a mess. I don't want to have knee replacements and everything. I don't want to, you know, I'm going to take the word of God and I'm going to speak the word of God over my body. You can take the word. You could speak it over your body. You can speak it over your finances. You could speak it over your family. You can speak it over your mom and dad. You can speak it over aunt and uncles. I know. I've done it. And it's come to pass. And it's still coming. because. The word goes before you, and when the word goes before you, that word, you know, when inside of you, you've got a desire of your heart. Does God know that? He knows all things. And so if he knows it, and if it comes to me, I go, oh, oh. No, that was a desire of my heart. A desire of her heart. When she was younger, this, this gal, she wanted children. She got it now, but she never gave up. She never got angry at God. How many people here are people that get angry at God because they didn't get something or a loved one died or their bills aren't paid and they got their house repossessed? What was your part of it? You were supposed to speak to the mountain and tell it to be down removed. We're supposed to speak to things just like speaking to those houses. Does that make sense? So now what I want to, to do, I want to sing that song or have that song. Glorious day. Would you please bring that up? And I want you to stand for this and turn down the lights a little bit because I think that's because I want you to go back over and we're gonna we're gonna look at this not today much anymore, but down the road we're gonna look at this. All right, so we're gonna praise and worship, and then we're gonna take communion. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When you seek first the kingdom of God, all of these things will be taken care of. What all things? Your bills. Problems in your marriage. Oh, problems in the family. Problems in your flesh. Every area. Yes, Lord. Do you know why that is? Because you'll have the scripture to say. You will have the scripture to say. That's why. Seek you first the kingdom of God and you learn what scripture to say. And when, you, when you're sick, what do you say? Oh, gee. Speak it, right? And if you have bills, what are you going to say to them? And then you speak to those bills and you tell them to get out 
get out of here. Be thrown into the sea. Get out. Bills, I call you paid. You've got to speak to it. Now we're going to take communion, but what we're going to do is we're going to play that song. Um, not C.C. Whiting's. Who was the other guy? Trevor? Yeah. Yeah. Toby Wells. Never lost a battle. <laughs> I wanted to see how long this would go. <laughs> I'm naughty. But we're going to, as soon as, we, soon as, soon as we're done drinking our juice here, then we're going to play that song. But I remember, you have a covenant with the almighty God. He owns everything. He knows everything. And you have a covenant with him. Right now, you're celebrating that covenant. You have a covenant for your flesh. Whatever needs to be done, it's finished right now in the name of Jesus. Speak to your body. Tell your body to come into order in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. You know what? If you got a sick or you got a little stomach issue or something like that, start drinking water. Take your tap water. Put a little salt in it. It's better than some of your bottled water, folks. I'm not kidding you. And drink about two glasses, three glasses. Don't overdrink, but you overdrink when you got something going on in your stomach, and it will straighten you out. Did you know that? I'm not talking about juices. I'm talking about water. We need the water for this flesh. If you go, can you go more than three days without water? Can you go more than three days without the Word of God? How many people do? No wonder they're filleting all over. I can't go without it even a minute, it seems. You know, you wake up during the night and you're thinking about him and, oh, Jesus, you're so good to me. Thank you that I got Pastor Finney. I love you, Father. Oh, and I got three beautiful children. Oh, and I look at all these people that I love, and then look at those little ones. Oh, I just can't help but praise him. So now we'll take this, and remember he was broken for you. He did it all just for you. In the name of Jesus, let's eat. You know what's nice? Even a little kid can take communion. They were saying about Biden not receiving communion. Well, I wouldn't want to give him communion either, but he has a choice, and communion can be taken by anybody and everybody. It doesn't make any difference if you're born again or not. But it's good to be born again, isn't it? Because you have a covenant now. And I thank you, Father, and remember, his blood was shed for us to make us righteous, to make you perfect. Your spirit man is perfect. That's the only way you'll get into heaven is when your spirit is perfect, and he did it for you in Jesus' name. Let's drink. And let's sing that song. Never lost a battle, or he never did what for a battle? Wasted a battle. Even if you're going through the battle and it looks like you're lost, don't you dare stop and think it was lost. When? Lysha? When the body was warm, did he give up? Went out, went back in, got it done. So don't you ever give up. Call me and I'll kick you from here over to Florida and then back to California. Got it? So, <laughs> you don't want to get on my wrath, do you? No, you just want to. You Listen, start writing down and then... But what are you going to write down? You're going to write down things for yourself. So for Wednesday night, this is what you're going to do. Remember? Remember the assignment for last time, last Wednesday night? Make a list of things you want, to, you want changed. Now, some, there's only 
couple of people that got back to me, and there was two different answers already, and I thought, you better repeat it again. Make a list of things you want to change. What do you want changed? Make that list. Don't go on and on and on the way it is now. Just say what you want. If you're sick, you say, healed. If you got bills, you say, paid. Relationships. What do you say to relationships? Healed. We got to get this part, right? So you're going to be ready. And I know everybody is going to be ready. And we're going to spend some time on this. But Dee should be back, and we'll include her to you. Okay, let's play that, please. A little bit and move them a little bit. You get that in your crawl that you never lose a battle. I don't. It may look like I'm going down sometimes, but I always come up a whole lot higher than I did before because I've got the Word of God. So this is your opportunity now. What's your opportunity? To speak to the Word of God and tell God what you want. Tell Him what you expect because He is already has it, all the provisions are all there for you. He's the most wonderful daddy in the whole world. And he's got it all just for you. So, Father, I thank you in the precious name of Jesus, my Yeshua Mashiach. I thank you. There is no one like you, and I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one here, and that they will call those things that be not as though they were and they will have great victory in every area of their life in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.